Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode on our B2B outbound marketing and sales automation series. As you know, we're looking really hard to find the best marketing and sales automation tools that can help you better use outreach, better tools will give you better results. And we found a really nice tool that I wanted to share with you guys. And luckily, I have today the, the co-founder, uh, uh, Hans Decker. Uh, he's the co-founder of Line AI. Hans, welcome first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And yeah, really excited to, to share a bit about what we're building, what we're doing, and a bit of the background behind the tool as well. Just yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, well, I'm always excited to hear about the latest tools and, and I mean, we're lazy people. We're trying to find ways on how we can automate part of the work. And as an entrepreneur, really, the more lazy you are, the more inventive you become, how not mm -hmm. to do something or how to uh, repetitive tasks, how you can automate. And Hans, the, the line AI is actually what? Can you just give us first? small introduction so people will know what is it before we, we move to the interview questions. Yeah, definitely. So um, Lime was actually built out of laziness. Um, <laughs> like you can, the thing is like you could, have, you could call it laziness. Uh, the way I like to phrase it is that I'm bothered by uh, inefficiencies. So whenever I see a process where I feel like, hey, man, that should be done by robots or it should be automated, um, I spend a lot of time on actually achieving that, which I suppose, you know, makes me makes me not lazy. And I feel like you're probably the same <laughs> when you want to automate something in your business, um, then you spend a lot of time on it. It's just um, basically what I used to run a call email agency. So I started as a business partner in an email agency, then co-founder, then founder. Um, in, in various agencies and every single time what we did is we um, would obviously send cold emails called LinkedIn messages and well when I started which was seven maybe eight years ago um, mm -hmm. you could blast out a bunch of cold emails and you could put first name in there and you get you get some salt leads out of it but then as time progressed then you obviously start noticing like hey i'm going to get marked as spam or people aren't responding or well you know what no one actually likes enjoys receiving those types of emails so let's put some more effort into it and then whenever we did that uh you have either have to do it yourself or you have to hire virtual assistants or you have to hire or arm your sdrs which um which which is okay, but it's, you know, that, that comes with a lot of problems on its own. And, you know, from your background, <laughs> you're, I'm preaching to the choir here, as in like, you'll know better than, than pretty much anyone out there that you need standard operating protocols. You need, um, you need automations there. You need to check everyone. You need to train everyone. You need to check output. You need, so it's, it's a really big process. And, I just always felt like, man, this this has to be automated. There should be robots who can who should be able to do this. And um, then 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 GPT three came out, which is you know a, a solution by OpenAI, which is an AI copywriter basically. And the moment that came out, I just knew like, hey, listen, this is what this is the missing puzzle piece, pretty much. Um, I didn't get access, but then I started Googling pretty frantically for, you know, people who were maybe building the same that I could potentially partner with them. And then I won late night on the seventh page of Google. I found some guys who were working on something somewhat similar. I reached out. Um, and now like six, seven months later, here we are with line.ai. So that's, that is the long version. <laughs> nice. No, I'm, I'm thinking it loud. When you do the outreach, there are several elements. Database building. Yeah, there are quite some tools that you can scrape or find the data. Then is the outreach. There are, again, a lot of different tools that, that handle the other part. Mm -hmm. Now it's getting the newest part with um, AI copywriting tools that actually write the whole content. And I think that that's the newest part now in the SDR world that uh, usually people were, you're going to scrape the database, you're going to start sending, but then you have to send a template, which is completely like high X and X is a variable in the name. Mm. And yeah, it feels spammy. And I was curious, Hans, um, in the whole lead generation ecosystem, uh, where is line AI actually put, how is positioned actually? 
Sure. So yeah, like, like you mentioned, um, and I've, I've been in the space for a bit and I've tried pretty much every tool out there just because I really like it. I, I really like playing around with, with MarTech, with sales tech. Um, and yeah, when it comes to finding data, you're not going to have any issues. There are really good database providers out there these days, like your Growbots and your Zoom Info and, and whatnot, or LinkedIn scrapers. You can scrape Sales Navigator. Uh, even we have that solution where you can scrape. So that's not going to be an issue. You can send emails again, Growbots, a Milkshake, Lemlist. So you have a lot of options there. Um, and then, yeah, like you mentioned, there are some some tools that allow you to write entire emails, uh, but where we fit in, we're, we're really unique. So there are a few tools who more or less try and do what we do, but we really like to think that we're um, that we're almost uh, like it's it's not necessarily a blue ocean, but we're almost in in like our own entire small market that you know fits into the ecosystem where we provide just a really small piece, pretty much, but a really important piece. Yeah. Where um, the thing is, if you're gonna have AI write the entire email that is either an issue for you personally as an SDR because you're going to have to check the entire email while you want to make sure that you know which bit is working and which isn't, right? But if each bit is different all the time, how are you going to know which CTA works? How are you going to know which which pitch or page yeah, It's much works? harder to measure, actually. You're right. Exactly. So that is an issue. Uh, and then if you're sending on behalf of clients like you guys are doing, then um, clients want to know what you're sending. So if you're sending, hey, listen, we're going to send something completely different every single touch point that we have with every single client, then they don't have anything to approve and they're just going to have to pray that whatever is being sent out in their name is something that they're comfortable with and that fits within their you know, brand guidelines, anything. So what we do is we just personalize an intro section. So or what some people call an icebreaker, for example, which is something that was introduced by, by Lemlist. Uh, I think was one of the earlier ones who started adopting that and really pushing that to their users. Where they say, okay, what you'll do is you'll have your fixed email, which is like, hi, first name, icebreaker. Uh, reason I'm reaching out is this and that, because I can do this or that for you. Is that something that you're interested yeah. in? And then an icebreaker, is a bit that you personalize to each prospect where you can say, um, hey, I just went on your website, saw your case study with Apple, really loved how you helped them improve revenue by 300%. Just something that shows you've done your research. So that can be based on those case studies. You can go to a person's LinkedIn profile and say, hey, notice that we used to go to the same university, or it can be based on a post that they've made or anything. So yeah, you can use that as an icebreaker. Maybe you can say, I'm just going to send a generic email, but then in my PS section, I'm going to go, uh, PS, love your latest blog post on, on marketing automation. Just something that shows you've done your research. Yeah, that is personalized we'll, approach rather than a generic. Exactly. And then, yeah, we pretty much, we use AI to automate that bit. So, um, to, to automate the, the, the whole personalization part. Uh, and we've seen that, you know, response rates, some people they've gone, they've three, four X their response rate. Other people's they've nice. three, four X their open rates. Um, and, and I mean, there are always some outliers where people have 10 X their response rates. So yeah, I'd love to talk about those, but yeah, that's that's an outlier. But overall, people see just far better response rates, open rates uh, for themselves and for their clients as well. Nice. Well, as I'm listening to you, Hans, we this is an agency, so we we took the done for you approach, mm -hmm. and we have different clients. Some clients are saying, you know what, I want to use automation, which we offer it as a service. There are companies that think we don't want to use automation. We want manually personalized, personalized outreach, like a rent test. They are in this case. Mm -hmm. And we even had cases. This was oof, a year ago, I think, or maybe two, where a client actually said, you know what? I need some of your research team to do one paragraph intro for this list of leads. Right. So we manually had to go over each prospect, yeah. go on their website, scroll on their LinkedIn profile, find something as a, as a teaser, as you said, as yeah. an icebreaker. And what we did is in an Excel, we actually created manually each of those icebreakers. So then when he was trying to send the email campaign, he actually started with high name, then mm. the custom icebreaker, and then exactly. it's a standard email. But yeah. man, it was so much effort. If you ask I've, me, wow. I've written thousands of those and I'm never going to write another one in the rest, <laughs> for the rest of my life. It is horrible. 
Like when you have a good SDR, when you're good at it, you can write, let's say you can write 25 per hour. Um, but it's just horrible work. If you're gonna have to do that for six, seven hours straight, uh, it's, it's, you'll, you'll burn out. Yeah, well, hundred percent. Yeah. I so see. that's not fun. But then again, it's it's like the rewards that you reap, it's it, they're they're really good. So it's worth it. Uh, but then again, like you, you're gonna hate it. <laughs> so uh, whenever I see something like that, I feel like, hey, uh, a robot probably should be doing that. Nice, nice. Well, uh, I'm curious actually to see how I sh how this works in action, Hans. And yeah. I'm sure that everybody looking at the video is like, okay, that could actually save me a lot of time. Uh, if you don't mind, would you actually share your screen with us and and give us a walkthrough, a short yeah. demo of how the software works? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what I'll do, yeah, I'll share my screen and I'll walk you through it. Let me see screen here. Um, and like I already mentioned to you earlier, like we're going to go through um, a pretty major update. So I'll also talk about some features like, hey, tomorrow this might look different, but, um, you know, it's so going to be even better. It's going to be. Well, I, I I appreciate your your stance on that, definitely. So you're seeing my screen, right? With the whole, yeah. let's get started yeah. bit. Beautiful. So. Um, this is the screen that you'll land on, um, and it's it's going to be a really simple four or five minute demo because we really try to build a really simple tool as well, where, like you mentioned, there are a lot of tools out there and you'll have your databases and your email automation and your email cleaning and your this and your that. So we didn't want to add a lot more to your workflow, just a really simple tool where you know you'll extract your data from somewhere or well hey we'll do it for you so you can use our uh, chrome extension and what you can do with a chrome extension you can go to linkedin sales navigator and once you're you're on your linkedin sales navigator search you can use a chrome extension you click one button that says extract leads will nice. extract the entire sales navigator search the cloud operation so you click one button and you can turn off your computer and you can go play with your kid or go fishing or, or anything. Um, and then we'll find the professional emails for those people. So that's one way of getting the data, or you can get it from robots or follow Zoom info. Then you upload your CSV here and I can have a quick look if I have a CSV ready. Um, I think this one should work. And then uh, you'll have your advanced settings here. So mm -hmm. one that we have here, for example, is called personal content, which is my, my personal favorite. And what that does is uh, it will try and find for your prospects, it will try and find if they've been on podcasts, if they've spoken on events or they've, they've hosted a webinar, if they've been featured in articles, maybe they've posted articles, nice. if they've featured in blogs, if they have a substate newsletter, if they've been on interviews, like in, in a couple of weeks, uh, once, you know, this interview is online and everything, it might be able to find that I've been on here, then look at the show notes, take something that I've said on here and use that as a quote to write a personalized interest saying, hey, Hans, we enjoyed learning about your history of line and how you find your co-founders on Reddit. Um, so it's, it's actually able to write stuff like that, which is just really, I don't know, like we built it, but it's really insane still. So um, that's one that we have. Now, as you can imagine, match rate is not going to be 100% there. Uh, but luckily, we also have other sources that we are able to find. So maybe case studies that the company has done, like I mentioned earlier, maybe the company has worked with Apple and they've done you know, Google Ads campaigns for Apple. And we can say, uh, hey, you know what? Just read about your case study for Apple and this and that. It's yeah. impressed me about it recent news something on the company website which works really well for e-commerce so if so it will talk about products that they're actually selling um and then blog posts so if you know they've written a blog post about anything and then uh one pretty cool bonus feature that we have is we have matching subject lines which is something i'll actually show you in just a second in the example that i have here and then one thing that you'll do is you'll set your preferences which is which works like a waterfall. So you could say, okay, this personal content is something that is most important to me. Um, so that will be my number one. Then mm -hmm. news isn't as important, but if you can find it, great. Then blog post would be my number three. So it's, it's, it's how you would train an SDR, right? You would say- Yeah, okay, first, first start looking for this. If you don't exactly. find, go to the next one. If you don't find, go to the third and fourth. Exactly. And that's exactly how you train, how you train uh, your AI here pretty much. 
then um, some of the new features that we'll be adding hopefully later today, otherwise later this week, is you can then save this as a preset so that for client number one, you'll have these settings. For client number two, you'll have other settings. That is a feature that we're releasing. We're releasing multi-language support, so Spanish, French, German, Dutch, etc. Um, as well as what we call no touch lines. And basically for these lines, they're really in depth and really good, but sometimes it's AI. So let's say five, between one and 5% of the time is gonna write something that just isn't great. Then um, uh, what, so what we've done, we've taken no touch lines where you don't have to check them. You know, 100% certain that they're always going to be good, just not really great. While with these re uh, these regular in-depth ones, they're going to be either really great, just good, and maybe one or two out of a hundred are going to be not good enough. Um, but that's basically it. So you hit confirm, uh, you'll map your fields. In the end, like the more data we have as input, the better your output will be. So ideally, we'll have first name, last name, company, job title, email, website, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. If you don't have those, that's completely fine. Like we'll still be able to find things. Just again, like the more you have, the better pretty much. And well, that's everything. Uh, you'll hit upload now. And then uh, imagine you upload a sheet with a thousand prospects that would take us about an hour to process. Wow. Yeah, that's, and like I said earlier, if you're having a good day, you can write like 25 per hour, right? So it does yeah, a week's It's work. a big difference. Yeah, it does a week's work in an hour. Then once it's ready, you have your results here, which you can download, um, or um, uh, we also have a sync option because we integrate with you know your favorite senders, we integrate with uh, Milkshake, Lemlist, Wavo, uh, Snov, Hunter, etc. And now what you can do pretty much is, and I think I have some set up here, is when you're running an agency, you'll have multiple clients, right? Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is you'll set up multiple clients, and then you can say, get this. Excuse me, this list I'm going to sync with client number three. And then the next list, I'm going to sync with client number two. And that way you can just manage unlimited accounts. Oh, on different theorems, actually, you're synchronizing the... Okay, that's actually smart. Exactly, exactly. So that's how you can do that. And you can organize your folders. You know, you can have client number one, client number two. Uh, that's how you can organize things. Um, but, you know, that's just the app. Then um, what everyone is, of course, waiting for is uh, is this right here, which is our actual <laughs> output. <laughs> what What's the output? Exactly. 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 Like, stop talking, dude. Um, but yeah, this is the output. So just the first one, for example, congrats on the improvement you made to Cato. It's great that you were able to reduce latency by 10 to 20 percent in China and Romania. Impressive. Then we also have a backup line which like i said sometimes the input is the output isn't good enough and what you want to do in that case is you want to um you want to swap them out right so you think ah you know what this one this isn't great fine copy this one paste it in here and you'll you'll work your way down the list um which is you know about a million times faster than having to write all of them yourself instead you just do some checking and you'll see okay hey this one is is better and more in depth than that one fine i'll swap them out and then you'll be left with one column with just really great lines that you can use as that icebreaker merge tag um, and then you'll have a matching subject line so here it's a case study intro based on mm -hmm. something that they did with Cato. So study line will be your work with Cato or your partnership with uh, Fispon. Hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, your placement on the eyes list or your post on stopping phishing attacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, the title is actually matching the custom paragraph that you're exactly. trying to do. Exactly, and that's basically everything that we do. <laughs> <laughs> when you see it like this, it's much simple, but I'm sure that in the background, everything that you need to do as a research to find content, to, to digest the content and to mm -hmm. get to the paragraph. And I was curious, uh, you export as a CSV. Can you import, can you search just for one guy, for example, instead of for multiple? So you or, need to, or, to get them one by one or? 
Yeah. Well, for example, I want to reach out to, to some guy and can I just give you his LinkedIn and or, or I can just put it into a spreadsheet and upload just as a one row. Mm. Yeah, so you could do that. But um, with our next update, which we'll push this week. So now we're at the end of uh, September. So let's say starting the 1st of October, you can do that. So we'll have a single input. You'll put someone. So you put my LinkedIn profile and it will write based on just based on the LinkedIn profile, it will write something. So it's going to be a little bit less in depth than what you're seeing here, but it will basically just take my entire LinkedIn profile and write between like four and 12 different lines based on that. So something based on my work history, something based on my volunteering history, my, um, my awards, my, you know, et cetera. So, Got it. Yeah, you're able well, to to up to paste this one LinkedIn profile if you would want to. Yes. And Hans, interesting. Now that you've mentioned, uh, actually, this introduction icebreaker, as you call it, mm-hmm. can also be done for LinkedIn outreach. It's not just for an email. Yeah, for the email, you need the subject line as well. Mm-hmm. But the same paragraph, we use it for LinkedIn as well, like congratulation of X Y Z. Yeah. And by the way, and you're actually continuing on the. LinkedIn outreach rather than just email outreach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, so here you'll have these, for example, which are great. And the average character count here is, I think, between, let's say, 160 and 180 characters, which means you still have 120 characters left for LinkedIn for that connection request, for example. So these, yeah, you can use them for LinkedIn. Um, so what you can do is you can basically use those for LinkedIn. If they didn't reply on there, you just use the same one for email or the other way around, right? If they didn't open your email, you use the mm-hmm. same one for LinkedIn. So that way, if you have a bit of a smaller market, you can really make the most out of it. Um, so yeah, these you can use for LinkedIn a hundred percent. Uh, but then again, with our new no touch ones that we're rolling out, those are based on their LinkedIn profile and they're a bit shorter, which means that they're even better for LinkedIn and will provide you with at least four or five different versions as well. So what you can do in that case is you can have your connection request to say, Hey, uh, love your switch from this company or that company, um, connection request. Then as they, as they um, accept your connection request, hey, thanks for accepting. Uh, this is what we do. We'd love to learn about what you do. P.S. Really impressed with you with the award that you won here and there. Um, so those bits that like you have, like up to twelve different bits that you can use with twelve different touch points to personalize all of them, or double personalize the first one. Say, hey, really impressed with your switch from company here and there. Uh, P.S. Love this and that as well, or really enjoyed that. And that. So you'll have multiple personalizations in there, and just each and every single message that you're sending out will seem as if you spend 20, 30 Thanks. minutes just you know, researching that person. Um, which I don't know, it's just, it's great. And like I said, you will see your response rates, your acceptance rates, your open rates, you will just see them, see them skyrocket pretty much. So it's something that I'm really excited, really passionate about, and we'll just keep moving forward with this, just keep improving. And the, the options that you'll have, they just keep increasing pretty much. Mm, nice. Very, very interesting because I see how people can actually use this in order to to improve the results. You don't do outreach just for the sake of doing an outreach. You're doing mm-hmm. the outreach in order to get as many responses as possible yeah. and hopefully get as many new clients. Yeah, and with exactly. this, you're actually taking that part where the ice breaking to, to show that it's not a, just a generic spam message, but mm-hmm. it's highly tailored. And I'm also curious now, Hans, this sounds really interesting. Does it also pass better with the anti-spam stuff because you're not sending the exact same message to everybody, but actually mm-hmm. even Google, when they start looking at your campaign from hundreds emails, you do have at least one paragraph or one sentence different. It's not just exactly. high name, but it's actually a different message. Yeah, exactly. So what they'll do is they'll look at the uniqueness of your message, right? If a certain, certain percentage of it is unique. Um, so that's just not an incentive to use this and to send short messages. And it will almost look as if your entire message is unique. So that is also one of the reasons why open rates are that much higher for the people who are actually using this, 
because they pass spam filters and yet yeah, like the matching subject line the unique uh pattern breaking subject lines they're great but then there's also the bit where your message is more unique so you pass spam filters meaning that because of that um your overall performance of your campaign will be much better your domain health will be better and you'll yeah. have more open rate like better open rates more opens and more leads but that as well just because you have more unique content um so if you want to go nuts then use this uh, spin text the rest of your message, which means that it will spin up like different variations of your message. And then you'll have pretty much a hundred percent unique messages going out like all the time. And then if you set big intervals between those, I really think that there's no reason why everyone in the world shouldn't be able to get, let's say 80, 85, maybe even 90% open rates and cold emails, unless you're sending like hundreds <laughs> per day. But if you're sending a hundred per day, then I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that we can get you to 85, 90% open rates. Nice. No, it sounds impressive because as I was listening to you, I said, well, you know what, with the tailored content, people will be more willing to respond, but that's the human approach. But that's why I realized as I was listening to it, well, you're also having improvement in the technical part because Google and all anti-spam filters are actually seeing different subject line with different customization. Mm -hmm. And you're actually having better del deliverability, I think is the right world. Yeah, yeah, it is, I think. Mm, nice. Very interesting. And um, Hans, I uh, also wanted to, to ask with you in regards to uh, on your website, if people want to try, uh, sure. you do have a free trial or something where people mm. could could test it. Yeah, let me just put my face back in the view. Um, ah, yeah, we, do, we do a free trial. So we offer 25 free credits, which means so we charge one credit per per row. So if we don't find anything or cannot write anything, then we obviously don't charge anything. Um, so for each row that we have to process, we charge one credit, meaning that you'll have 25 free icebreakers plus subject lines uh, for free if you sign up on the website. Um, and then if they get, if, if, you know, people are watching this, if you jump in the chat, you manage Bisbee, then I'm happy to double that to 50. So oh, nice. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I'll be happy to mention that usually below the video, we put the link and we also give option how people can try. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, 25 to 50 is quite enough to see it for yourself because at the end of the day with 50, you're not solving a problem. They can just taste the, the yep. difference. And from there, people can choose whether like I'm not impressed or this is exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you had a monthly plans. You also have uh, on the go up options. Yep. So in that regard, they can choose what works best for them. Yeah, exactly. So we have pay as you go, which means you pay zero per month and you just pay for the credits that you're using. Um, and then yeah, we have monthly plans as well. So with like 25 or 50, Hey, you could book a bunch of leads if you send them out. But it, yeah, the idea is, of course, for you to to have to just check it out, have a look, and see. Okay, hey, this is you know up to my quality standards, or it isn't, or it isn't useful, or 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 it is. Um, and then yeah, then there's pay as you go. If you still if you're still not ready to commit or anything. Yeah, sounds 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 impressive. And tell me a bit about the the partnership side, Hans. How is the the line AI? Uh, open to to partnerships or what kind of partnership do you actually prefer sure so when you when you're talking about partnerships do you mean like promotional or maybe integration wise or um well i thought i'm thinking it loud that usually partners are essentials for for great growth so mm -hmm. i was curious whether uh line ai has like affiliate or or white label or mm -hmm. reseller options or uh, in in that regards sure so we do have a few resellers so if there's something that either you or anyone else is interested in then hey let's you know let's just jump just jump in our chat we're there almost 24 7 because two of the co-founders in the us um and and they work a lot like i do when i'm in europe so we're covering all time zones pretty uh <laughs> pretty well so just yeah ask in the chat and then we can talk about that then uh we currently don't offer white label but we're fairly close to rolling out our api again um which is something that we're obviously really excited about so if anyone is interested in in you know trying this out uh for to 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 integrate this within the tool that they're yeah. building or they're they have or anything, then uh, again reach out in the chat 
like we'll roll out the API before the end of the year. So if you're, you know, if you're seeing this in 2022, then just go to the website and you'll find all you need to know there. But until then, just ask in the chat, we can put you on a wait list or maybe we can already get you testing initially, nice. but we'll roll out our API again pretty soon. Nice. Well, that sounds actually perfect. And I'm sure that, yes, uh, that's why we always ask for partnership opportunities because some of the people are like, well, I think I can sell this tool in my country, in my state, in my region. Mm -hmm. They are usually curious what kind of options there are. Yeah. And the last yeah. part, I usually... Ah, sorry, you wanted to add something? Yeah, yeah sorry to interrupt you there. So speaking only on my country, my region, as I said, this week we'll also will add uh, Italian, Portuguese, French, Spanish, German, and ah, Dutch. Nice. So we'll have a, a few more languages in there as well. That's that's really good. And while you started talking about the future, I was curious to, to move the question toward the, the, the plans. Like, okay, we're in the last quarter, almost in the last quarter. There are three days left in this quarter, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, SDRs with quotes and targets. And I'm sure that, yeah, you announced some news that's going to be launched very soon. But in the terms of a bit mid to long term ideas, where, where do you actually Hans, see this uh, line AI forwarded? Where Either into a complete CRM or even more in depth into the specialization. I was really curious to see how, where do you see the, the tool in the future? Exactly. So, um, look, we're a little bit secretive on that because there are some people who, um, uh, you know, they really enjoy following us and then uh, following and copying our success or trying to pretty much. Um, but what I can say is that we really prefer to be specialist rather than, than you know, generalist. generalist. Of course. So we're really looking to go a lot more in depth and become the absolute number one market leader in, in sales personalization at scale. Um, so we're not really looking to add CRM or, or other types of automation, uh, like never say never. So if we feel like, okay, our users would really benefit from um, having a tool that they're using there to have that into our current solution, then we'll definitely consider it. But we're really looking to automate the whole sales personalization at scale thing. So whether it is, um, you know, talking about, so however you're currently personalizing your emails manually, we'll be able to do that automatically at scale, at scale. within now. And I would say a year we're able to replace almost any VA or SDR out there. Mm, nice. That's actually a bold uh, yeah. strategy, yeah. but I completely understand. People are like, well, some people, the roadmap is like, we're going to add all the additional functionalities to cover the whole cycle, generalist. Mm -hmm. While others are like, well, no, this is where we're good at. And we're going to just go into more in-depth, making the best specialized solution out there. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, it is a bold statement. And I mean, like, like you say, like, uh, aim for, uh, aim for the, the moon, the sky or the stars, whatever. Um, so, and when I say replace an SDR, I don't feel that sales has to be done by robots, obviously, because humans, they close deals, right? So sales should be more human, but that first initial touch, so just getting your foot in the door, having, you know, those opening those opportunities and actually starting those conversations. That's where I feel we as humans, we can really rely a bit more on technology and just make our lives a bit easier there. And then once there's that good match, then we as humans can take over and then diagnose and see how we can potentially help that that lead that we've generated, help them find the best possible solution and, and sell to them. So sales will not ever be automated or done by robots. And we <laughs> uh, we would not ever try and move into that direction. But that, you know, getting your foot in the door, generating those conversations, that is definitely something where we feel we can really help with automation. Yeah, but also that part is actually the most labor intensive part on the mm -hmm. funnel, the top part where you're introducing, engaging into the conversation. It's much easier when you just show up on calls rather than spending all the effort at the top of the funnel to be more focused on quality one on one meetings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you had a good point there. Um, uh, Hans, I think that we're also finishing with time. So I, I really wanted to, to thank you 
you very much for for coming uh, on on this episode. Uh, for everybody else, I mean, you know the drill. Just below the video, I'll actually let a link to the to the tool, so you can actually try with the twenty five or or fifty if you had the bees be in the in the chat. Uh, have a look at it, play with it, and then of course, if you see the value, happy to continue. If not, at least give some feedback to Hans, so he would get some like, okay, exactly. why this or why that. And I really think that automation for, for high ticket service providers is the only way because we, we're not corporations. We don't have hundreds of, hundreds of SDRs at bay. And even if we have, it would be a huge cost. And as, as we started the conversation, we are the lazy guys. So we have to figure out on how to automate the repetitive tasks. And yeah, you cannot do the wholesale with robots. You still need humans, but they actually use the human part far below downwards in the funnel where you need the meetings or you need something more specific. Uh, Hans, thank you very much again for yeah, coming definitely. to the show and for everybody else. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody.